About three weeks ago, I went browsing YouTube to watch a few videos, as we all do. I checked trending to see which music videos were taking up space meant for YouTube creators, and then checked my subscriptions. This is where I found that 2 Clicks Philip had uploaded another one of his patented techie explainy videos, much to my delight. I'm a sucker for knowledge. If you don't know who 2 Clicks Philip is, or rather the Clicks Philip family of channels, but for brevity purposes, 2 Clicks Philip, he's well known for making CSGO analysis videos and whatever the Total War series is meant to achieve. Go check him out, he's pretty funny and has genuinely insightful content when it comes to life and technology alike. The point of the video was to show off the power of the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G APU, that's Accelerated Processing Unit, a CPU and GPU in one package. The goal of an APU is to be a cheap and cheerful middle ground so you don't have to buy a separate processor and graphics card while waiting to get something better, and for 90 quid, this APU does the job. The video exists because he was building a PC for one of his friends and before handing the build over he wanted to test out frame rates for the APU solution while he had the opportunity. How low can you go to get a playable frame rate in modern games on a £90 APU? I'll put a card up on the top right so you can watch the whole video, it's quite an interesting watch. Despite this admittedly long preamble, I'm not here to talk about the Ryzen 3 2200G APU or any real flaws in the video that 2 clicks Philip made, rather this video is more of a follow up to a comment I left on that video, talking about 2 Clicks Philips video encoding options with Radeon Relive, which is how he captured his footage for the video. This is AMD's answer to Nvidia Shadowplay, a background recording application from within Radeon settings. And you don't need a login, so... That's nice. In the comment section, I was being a tad bit snarky, I'll fully admit. We get a brief glimpse of the real life settings menu in the video, and the bitrate is set to 50 megabits per second. I pointed out that settings probably a bit overkill considering what subjects to Clips Philip was recording, especially when real life changes resolution for each game, making the bitrate even more overkill if the game is set to run at a resolution 720p, for example, rather than 1080. Prompted by the comment thread, I decided to actually look into the the performance hit for Relive when setting the video to record a different bit rate. I know people have done tests like this before, but I wanted to look for myself at the performance impact on games when Relive is active. Relive? Relive? Have I been saying that wrong? Is this a GIF GIF situation where neither is wrong, but I get shouted out online for saying GIF? I tell you what, I'll use both and I can anger everyone watching. Cool with you lot? These tests were a learning experience for me as much as it is to educate you, dear audience, on Relive, so bear that in mind. Also, I had to learn how to use Google Sheets, so that was fun. I found my Relive experiment interesting, not least because I was surprised by the performance hit the game took when Relive was active. I'll say this now, my build does not have an APU, so my results are going to be different to those of 2 clicks Philips anyway, and anyone else's for that matter, should you want to test this yourself. This is the reason why I didn't note down the lowest FPS and the highest FPS for each game, only jotting down the average frame rate on my testing results, as the low and highs are more relevant to the game itself, rather than when I'm recording with Relive. Also, because jotting down every number is tiresome and I only have so much time. Fun side note, Windows 10 updated itself while doing this test, so I had to redo some of these benchmarks for consistency's sakes. On to the titular experiment testing conditions. The five games I tested are a mix of modern games, as well as games that can run easily on pretty much any hardware, those being For Honor, CSGO, Hitman 2016, Tomb Raider 2013, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. The recording bitrate on Relive was set to 25, 50, and 100 megabits per second, respectively, for each test, with the audio bitrate being set to 160 kilobits per second, which is lower than 2 clicks Philips video setting of 192 kilobits per second. That's a decent enough bitrate who don't have audiophile grade headphones. <laughs> and also to keep the file size down without resorting to the HEVC codec, which I'll talk a bit more about later. I also noted down the performance loss percentage with Relive on and off for each megabits per second tier. I'll put it on screen for each game recording. Alright, on to the tests, the meat of this very video. You've waited long enough. First up is For Honor, correctly spelt for my native tongue, a fairly recent game with a fairly demanding benchmark. For Honor, frame rate variance was quite minimal, not being affected by Relive that much, even at the completely overkill 100 setting. A trend you'll see in the following benchmarks is how little frames per second I lost when I cranked the graphics setting up. My theory for this behaviour is because my graphics card is working harder, the frames are being encoded faster than they would be at medium or absolute low. I'm probably wrong, but it does sure seem that way. An interesting anomaly is that 
that at 4K, with Relive recording at 25, the game got a 2FPS performance boost somehow. Moving on to eSports Juggernaut CSGO, Relive was, once again, not affected too much by CSGO in terms of performance. CSGO is quite a polished game, especially after the Panorama update. Absolute low and low settings with Relive on and off gave the weirdest results. Relive at 50 was a bit better than Relive at 100, and by quite a way in regards to 25. More interestingly, CSGO at 4K was eSports monitor ready for me on my machine, meaning I could buy a 144Hz FreeSync monitor and play at 4K if I wanted to. I, I'm, I'm not going to, but you know, it's nice to have that option. The rest of the 4K results were only slightly above 100fps, though that's still very much playable for most people. On to my favourite game on the list, Hitman 2016 no subtitle for no apparent reason. This is the only game I tested without any real proper frame rate oddity of some kind. Hitman's frame rate numbers all went on a lovely downward trend and never back up, to any significant degree. The highest frame differences were about 5 and 7 FPS on both absolute low and low, both between no relive and 25. All of the other results for Hitman managed to keep the frame rates between each relive tier at 2 to 3 FPS consistently, even when going to 4K when the frame rate difference was well within the margin of error, never leaving 28 FPS. The first Tomb Raider game of the rebooted series also had quite mixed results, both story-wise and its average frame rate, and this is also a trend in Rise of the Tomb Raider 2. With the exception of no Relive, for obvious reasons, the results seem quite inconsistent. Relive at 25, with the game on absolute low, had a worse frame rate average than 100 with the same game setting. Low at 50 is worse than low at 100 by a single frame, though again that's well within the margin of error, so there's that. Ultra, Ultimate and Brown Pants 4K were relatively consistent, and like with Hitman, went on a downward curve, though Relive at 50 gave these settings a performance boost when compared to 25 and 100 megabits per second. Unlike all the other games, the Tomb Raider games have hair technologies that made every test of Relive on and off slower than if they were enabled. Tress effects for Tomb Raider 2013 and pure hair for Rise of the Tomb Raider are the culprits here. For the curious among you, both were made by AMD, neither by Nvidia near as I can tell. Tress effects was way worse performance wise than pure hair was on average, which didn't help with the Relive testing, let me tell you. I chose to do the test when these hair technologies would be defaulted to on on its preset specifically because I know from experience turning these off gives you a neat performance boost, hence the doubles and ultra and ultimate for Tomb Raider 2013 and the double entries for medium and high on Rise of the Tomb Raider. I kept it on for very high as the point of that test was to be the highest settings possible at 1080p with no compromises. Same with 4K, goes without saying. Another constant in my testing method was the video codec, AVC, better known as H.264 by basically everyone. HEVC or H.265 at equivalent settings looks the same but has half the file size. A good 1 minute 30 long 100 megabits per second AVC video recorded with Relive is just shy of a gigabyte. EGVC halves that to around about 500 megabytes. Sounds good, and it is for shorter recordings like replays and such, which is something else that Radio and Relive can also do. And if your hard disk spaces are the premium, HEVC is well worth it. Performance impact be damned. The cost is the video encoding takes much longer and is both more computationally and graphically intensive. It's quite common to see a lot of hitching in game when you start recording and end recording with HEVC active, which subsequently leads to a lower FPS in games for the period that you're recording. I didn't do a second round of tests to confirm this, I again know from experience that this is how HEVC works, and it's the only compromise it has, which is why I didn't use it in these tests either. All in all, I am happy with my results. I've wanted to do a video testing Relive and its performance costs for quite a while, so two clicks for it sort of gave me the excuse to do it. Another reason why I wanted to do it is that it would be useful for some people should they consider getting an AMD graphics card or an APU. I'm quite glad I made this video delving into Relive and its effect on your average frame rate with Relive recording in the background. I hope this is useful for people as a guide or just an interesting look into the inner workings of Relive. Relive. Whatever. If you don't know who took... that's gonna be hard to say. Two clicks Philip. Two clicks Philip. Two clicks Philip. Two clicks Philip. That's going to be hard to say.